Hi, my name is Kevin Fernandez, and welcome to my channel, Gamers Genie. Today, I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favorite abstract strategy games. Um, now, I know there's a lot of debate going around in the board gaming community about what is considered an abstract strategy game. Some people say it's like games that don't really have a theme or anything like that. Well, everything's got a theme now, so it's kind of hard to take that away now. Um, for me, I feel like it's a game that doesn't have like a definitive story to it. So like, uh, you know, if you play a game like Ticket to Ride, that's a strategy game. I know a lot of people consider that an abstract strategy game, but it does have a theme to it. It does have a kind of a story around it as well. So that's just my opinion about this. Uh, now, of course, this is 100% my opinion. Um, I do like abstract strategy games. They're kind of a, a nice thing, so you're not thinking too much into stuff. But without without further ado, let's count down. Okay, uh, number ten is Onitama. Uh, this is a game by Conception uh, or Conception Games. Uh, this game is uh, it's a it's a very big favorite I know around board gamers. Uh, for me, it was okay. I mean, I don't hate it. I like it. I mean, obviously, it's on my list. It's just um, there's other games that I kind of like a little more than this one. It's 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 like a smaller, more compressed version of chess um, from the way I I've seen it. Um, and it's a, it's a lot quicker too. So if you like playing chess but don't like to sit around for hours. Uh, this is a pretty good. This is a pretty good game for you. Uh, Onitama has got some pretty good, uh, pretty good game components. Uh, it comes in like a little Jenga-sized um, box. Um, it's pretty fun. It's a two-player game, so that's why I'm kind of not that in that much in a hurry to buy the game, because because uh, you know. As far as two-player games go, it's like, I have, you know, there's Jordan, um, but she's not always in the mood to playing a game. I need to make sure that I have at least a solo mode for that, and it's never a one- to two-player game for stuff like that. Um, but anyways, like I said, the components are good, the artwork is good, a lot of the stuff about it is good. Game, you know, the rules are pretty simple. It's, it's very easy to get to the table. So number 10, Onitama. Okay, so number nine is Blue Lagoon by Blue Orange Games. And I believe I do have a how to play video on this one, so I'll put it a link in this video, in this section of the video, so you guys can check it out. Um, this game you get to play as, uh, you know, people, wayfinders, sailing around these different islands and, you know, taking resources, gathering resources and collect, it's, kind of like resource gathering, it's set collecting, it's area control. There's a lot of stuff in that. There's a lot of mechanics in this game. It is, in my opinion, it's a really, really fun game. Um, who's like right there? I can't rem I can't remember who designed it, but uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a super fun game, super enjoyable. So you know, like I said, you uh, so you explore it. But then later on, you have to kind of build settlements and everything and expand on the islands and every and all that stuff. So there's like two phases you have to do, and you have to really think of how you want that strategy to play out because um, different things will be affected and scored by in different rounds. So that's why number nine is Blue Lagoon. Okay, so number eight is Suro by Calliope Games. Uh, the ga this game is pretty cool. It's a tile placement game. Uh, you have these little stone figures, and you have to try. What you have to try to do is you have to place a tile and move your character across the path. The whole point of the game is you're trying to knock everybody else off the board without knocking your character off. Uh, 
um, without knocking your character off. If you knock your character off the board, then you lose. You can actually cause yourself to lose the game, which is a very crazy thing to think about. Um, I, I pl I've taught this to a couple of my family. I've taught this to a couple of my friends. It's a pretty fun game. It says 15 to 20 minutes, but honestly, I think you can actually play it a lot quicker because of how quickly you can get eliminated from this game. Um, but yeah, number eight, Serto. Okay, so number seven is Quattro by Gigamac. Uh, this game is kind of like, so it's like if you like Connect Four or Tic-Tac-Toe, but you want a lot more strategy into it. So this one you have to try to get four in a row, just like Connect Four or something like that, but you, but you don't have to do it like four of your pieces. It can be four things with like little, with like a little circle in, inside. Uh, or maybe four of the same size, or four of the same color, or four of the same... But here's the thing. You will place your opponent's piece in on the board, and your opponent will place your pieces on the board. So you have to really think, how are you going to alter this to where you're going to win? There's a lot of strategy that goes into Quattro. I do love this game. It's a really fun game really enjoyable, really thinky, as Z Garcia would say. But yeah, number seven, Quattro. Okay, so number six is Hive by Gen42 Games. Uh, this game is like you have different insects, you're adding tiles, you're moving tiles, different insects, uh, get to move around in different ways and of course it's like kind of a chess thing so you, I believe that you have a queen instead of the king that you're trying to take because you know in the insect world um, bugs uh, they favor their queen and there is really no king there's just a queen and that's it um, so this game is pretty cool I played this on uh, board game arena it was a really fun game uh, it's it's uh, it's really nice. I like the... I've actually seen the game. I like uh, the pieces. They're very solid, very weighty. It's a good game, and it's pretty easy to get into. So, number six, Hive. Okay, so number five is The Duke by Catalyst Game Labs. Uh, this game... Uh, this game is, uh, you know... Again, it's another like chess-esque game where you have different pieces, different powers, and it kind of plays it a little bit like checkers. Um, I played this game like once or twice. It's, it's, this is why it's kind of like in the middle because it's like I really do like the game, but I don't play it that much. So I don't think it's going to get past uh, part um, uh, the number five spot. Uh, but this game is a pretty enjoyable game. One of the best parts is you can actually do this as a print and play. You don't really need to buy the actual game. Um, although granted, yeah, you, if you want to support these, you know, these companies, yeah, I do recommend that you buy them, but you know, you, you can also do a print and play. Um, I recommend getting the print and play so that way you can try it out before you decide to buy it. So yeah, download the, download the print and play, print it out, cut it out, Play the game, um, and uh, yeah, then see if you'd want to actually invest some money towards the Duke. Um, but you know, if if you are into like games like that, I highly recommend it. Number five, the Duke. All right, so number four is Patchwork by Lookout Games. Uh, this is a uh, Uwe Rosenberg game. Uh, I was going to actually, I was, it was pretty close to winning our Christmas poll with the Patchwork Christmas edition, but uh, unfortunately the Grinch took that spot, so we taught, so I taught Grinch Grow Your Heart. Uh, hope, hopefully next year, maybe Christmas edition of Patchwork will show up. I don't know, but we'll see. Um, but you can play this one in any, uh, so it's like Patchwork is like, you place these p tiles down, you have to try to complete this quilt. You have to fill up as many spaces as you possibly can. Uh, once the game ends, 
depending on how you add all your points up, whatever you didn't cover on your board, you have to subtract from, from your score, uh, and the player with the most points wins. It's a pretty simple game. It's pretty easy. It's a two-player game, so it's going to be relatively quick. Um, I do enjoy it. I like the Christmas edition, uh, but I know there's Halloween, there's Valentine's Day, there's Americana, there's original there's you know whatever kind of design you want so you know but they all play the same so whatever whichever one floats your boat you can get that one i know my brother kyle would probably like uh patchwork halloween edition so yeah number four patchwork oh boy so number three <laughs> is Sagrada. I actually did enjoy this game. I played this at my uh, my game night down in Elgin. and We played this game and I almost won. I almost won, but I was missing like two dice uh, to complete my to complete my window. I was missing two dice um, and it, it was like really hard for me to get that all lined up. Um, but this game is really good. It's really beautiful. Very like all these like nice colorful dice. Um, ugh. Uh, so, it you know, of course it's a really fun game. You roll the dice, and you have to match up um, the, the dice on your board. However, there's like some conditions. You can't have the same numbers connected to each other and stuff like that. So, the further you go in the game, you have to think, okay, well, I already placed this, this number here. I have to put this number here. And then, you know... Some of them you specifically need a number, some of them you specifically need a color. Uh, it's a really interesting game, uh, it's really fun. It's a four player game, but you can expand it to six players, and it, it flows pretty well with six players in my opinion, because I did play with like the, the biggest number we can get. So yeah, number three, Sagrada. Okay, so number two is Noctiluca by Z-Man Games. Uh, Noctiluca is a game where you're collecting these special type of jellyfish and you're putting them in sets. So this is also kind of a select set collecting game. But what you have to do is you place a pawn like in this pool and it can only go in a straight line. So it has to go in the direction that you lined up. So you take all the dice and then you put them up on these cards and you try to complete these sets of cards and you get the uh, get points. Player with the most points wins the game. It's a really fun game. It's kind of quick. Um, but Z-Man Games has a pretty quick uh, thing with their games. It's, it's still pretty fun. It's a still a pretty fun game. It's really enjoyable. I first discovered this at Gen Con. I think it was Gen Con 2018 I discovered it. Um, I've... It's, this is kind of one of my... One of those board games. I get out when I want to strategy strategy but not too heavy when I want to kind of relax a little bit not really think that heavily about what my next move is going to be uh, so yeah number two Noctiluca okay so number one is Azul Summer Pavilion by Next Move Games oh my gosh I do love I love the original Azul don't get me wrong I've played it on Board Game Arena so many times but Summer Pavilion was like the first game that kind of introduced me to this. So I do like this one a little bit more. Um, I like I like the strategy that goes into it. I like all the different aspects that you have to put in place in order to make sure you get, get the maximum number of points. And like, you know, if you use the color for, uh, for completing the center... You can't use that color again. You have to all have unique colors. One time, uh, Jordan actually came very, very close to completing her board. It was kind of amazing that she managed to pull that off. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a really fun game. It's a nice game that we like to get out and and play when we just wanna um, when we just wanna when we just wanna play a random game. Uh, we don't really care about the theme or anything like that. Uh, just some pretty good solid mechanics, pretty good solid game design, pretty good solid game pieces, 
Um, one of the cool things about this, though, is as you if you played Azul, like, or if you played Summer of Pavilion, for Summer Pavilion, you put all the tiles that you just, so you draw one color plus the wilds, and all the tiles that you didn't draw, you put them in the center. Someone will take a tile from that, but they also take another tile that will subtract a point per tile that you've taken. That's pretty cool. So you have to take it with caution. So it is a little more tougher. I know for any unused tiles, uh, you any unused tiles you have that you couldn't use on your board in the original game, it would subtract X amount of points, and it would be like start with one, and then you go up higher and higher as you progress through the game. But enough about the original. Number one is Azul Summer Pavilion. Well, there you go. There's my top 10 abstract strategy games. If there's any games that you enjoy that's kind of got a little bit of an abstract strategy, put them in the comments below, and I'd love to hear your opinion about that. Um, I just like hearing from, from all you wonderful subscribers that we have. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to be notified for top 10s lists just like this one. Like the top 10 games of 2023. Um, that's going to be our next uh, top 10s list for uh, next month. Uh, but if you are in a charitable mood, consider donating to Samaritan's Purse Operation Christmas Child. Uh, this charity is a wonderful charity. Um, it makes sure that a lot of kids have a present on Christmas but it's not just any present like toys or anything. Sometimes it can be like little toys. It can be clothes. It can be food. It can be, you know, what they have a list of what they're asking for for Christmas. And you have to do what you can do. You fill up a shoebox full of the stuff that that one ch that that child uh, requests for Christmas. You wrap it up. You ship it over. They ship it over to them. And they get to open it up uh, Christmas morning so they can have, uh, you know, food, clothes, uh, maybe it might be something educational like books or something like that. Uh, but you, t you get this ornament. The ornament has what the kid uh, what the kid wants or what the kid's into. And then you it's got their age. And then you just ship that box over to them. And uh, this is a wonderful charity. It's global. Um, they, they, ha they help so many kids around the world. So, yeah, please, I'll leave a link to the link. I'll leave a link to their site in the description below so you can read a little bit more about them. Um, you know, obviously you can donate money. You can uh, request to uh, sponsor a child and send them a present as well. Or you can just spread the word. Spreading the word is always one of the best things to do to help around this time of year. Um, so I want to thank you all for, for uh, checking out their site and... Thank you for uh, participating in any of these charity shout-outs that uh, we have done in the past. Uh, thank you, guys. But uh, with that being said, uh, please be on the lookout for our next Top 10s list. But until then, thanks for the views.